Hello everyone, this is Billy. Welcome to Billy Holman Creations. Now today I'm going to uh, work with this little mushroom jar that I've had for some time and I believe I got this from Let's Resin and uh, I want to try to make it a little fall colored looking pumpkin. I have pumpkin on the brain, excuse me. Mushroom. But we're going to use orange so it'll look like a pumpkin, maybe. Anyway, I have some of my mica powders here from the soap shop. And they're located in my Amazon storefront. I've got light brown, bronze, uh, okra yellow, oyster. This is a nice green. I like it. And I have olive green a regular orange and then a golden orange so I'm going to be using these colors today I pulled out a little bit of dollar store glitter I don't know if I'll use that for sure and then right here I have some dried tiger lily petals so my thoughts were when I do the roof to possibly make it look like a thatched roof you know I'm, I'm just going to lay them in I'm not going to cut them or uh, chop them up. I'm just going to lay them in as they are. And then, let me get my scissors here. I found a mold. Oh goodness. Me and Timu. I should show you my Timu hauls, but it's embarrassing. Pardon that noise. Anyway, this little mold is, there's two squirrels. Uh, you know, the back will be flat, but there's two little squirrels here. And I love my squirrels. And um, we have a, an acorn and a branch, twig, branch, and then a pine cone. I don't know why my light just went off. What happened here? Is my battery? The light is built in this camera stand. I hardly ever used it because I just discovered it. Can you believe that? Probably. But... Anyway, I like this little mold. You know, if I can uh, curve the squirrels, we might have them on side of the mushrooms for our fall theme. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the lid and like a mushroom, it's got these dots on it. And I was just going to color these dots. And I'm thinking I'm going to use the, the light colored for the lid the light orange so our tiger lily petals can you know can be seen um i may do the body the same color or go with the dark orange but either either way i'm going to color one or two of these little dots a dark orange and i already have of course here we go billy's videos cat hair wouldn't be the same without it so let me move this out of the way get here and let's start with that dark orange. First, I want to see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six little dots. And I had approximately how many colors would I go? We could skip the brown. We could do the orange. Maybe we will do the. Well, there's five. Let's do two oranges, a yellow oyster, and an olive, possibly. I did grab a bronze. Um, I'm going to save that for a squirrel. So let me just start out first with the yellow. And I've got this little makeup brush that came with some um, mica powders. They came with my, um, are they iridescent? Not my iridescent, the, oh goodness. I, I'm I'm blank already. I'm blank. I was doing so good on a roll, and then da, 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 da. all right, never mind. I noticed these micas don't stick real well to some of these Timu molds, but I'm just going to do a yellow dot right in here if I can get it in there, make it stick. It's pretty light. And if it all, you know, if it fails, I can always paint these on top later. And if I did that, I'd use my testers, 
paint. I do love my tester's paint. That way it's shiny and you don't have to seal it. So just a little yellow. Maybe I'll do big orange. And I'm just, oh, this is the bag that won't open. I need to put this in a container that I can handle. It's ripped. There we go. All right. I'm just going to try the brush end. So I'm just going to carry on and. that out over my trash can quick. Now if they show up they'll be pretty. Look at that. I'll go in with a wipe and a little alcohol and clean that out. But let's see what we can do with the little squirrels and acorns here. Now I'm thinking I don't have a you know a red that would be pretty cool for a red squirrel but I do have that orange golden orange to accent the tail or highlight it a little bit so well I'm just gonna take a little bit of this bronze just go right into the tip of that tail up the sides and on the tip. We'll maybe come under a little bit. You know, I had a pet squirrel named Little Bill for almost six years. Oh, he was just the greatest little, little creature. Someone had left him in my front porch in a shoe box and uh, he had a bad leg so I took him to my vet, Dr. Allen. God bless him, he's passed now, but he was a fantastic veterinarian. I mean, he knew his stuff and he was so, so gentle with everyone he encountered. I mean, I, I just had so much respect for Dr. Allen. And anyway, I took this little squirrel in and he argued with me. He says, I can't treat a squirrel. It's a, it's a wild, you know, it's a wild animal. It's wildlife. I can't treat it without, you know, permission from the game and fish department or whatever. And I'm begging, oh, please, Dr. Allen, he's just a baby. Just look at his leg. All right, he says. And so he takes little Bill in and looks at his leg and it wasn't broke, but he gave him a shot of a steroid in his in his hip there and and then the funny part was is I was getting ready to leave and I says well Dr. Allen how much do I owe you for the squirrel and he said squirrel we haven't seen a squirrel in here and he looks at his help you know in in the office and he says nobody I mean nobody has seen a squirrel in this office today you know what I'm saying <laughs> I just laughed I just laughed he didn't want to get in trouble. God bless him. But yeah, I had little Bill for a long time. His leg healed up well, and he was quite a little joy to have. If I can find a little video of him, I'll, I'll share that on, in this video with you. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and use the bronze and do the actual nut part of this acorn. like that and I guess I'll mix up just a brown um, might as well do that little stick tap some in there I might just make up a little brown resin and pour that in here 
and then I'll do the eyes and a bit of the face later. So let's go to this orange I was talking about, a little lighter orange. Yeah, little Bill had an orange belly. He was just our brown squirrels. We don't have red squirrels where I live, but he had a little orange belly. Put a little orange in there. Was he holding a nut? He's holding a nut. This one's, well, I guess they're both eating. I'm scavenging. I have a lot in my neighborhood. I just love to watch them. I love animals, all sorts. All sorts. All right, now we're just gonna put a little light brown in there. And uh, should have grabbed a dark brown. I don't think I have a darker brown than this to put into the, oops, I just oranged it. Put in the acorn, but, or not the acorn, the pine cone. There we go. Do a little brown in the squirrels. I didn't measure this mold. I don't know what it takes. I could pour um, alcohol in it. Uh, that's what Miss Wanda does. She uses alcohol, alcohol to fill her molds and see how much they take. And then that way, uh, it just, you know, she'll dump it back out and measure it, and then it'll just get absorbed. And uh, she doesn't have to worry about waiting for water to dry in her mold. Let's get down into your little feet. There we go. There's our brown squirrel. I do like this micro powder. I still have quite a bit of it. That's why I tend to use it. Um... I do have micro powder from Just For You Online UK, some of that, and I do have my chameleon powders, that's what I was trying to remember, my chameleon powders from Let's Resin. But usually I'm, I'm using these because I did get their larger pack, and there's quite a selection in there. So I'm going to take a peek and make sure I have most of this in there. Get his ears. And there's some. Might have to get a uh, micro brush for that little area. If I have one here with the tip still on it. Almost my tips are broken off. Here's one. Right in. God, what's that got on it? I think it's the other ears, the other side. I'm going to just have to get some right in, right in these ears here. Just a little bit of a divot, a little hole in there, and that's what that is here, too. Get that in there. I think we're good. And back to the acorn. Little Bill loved his acorns, our friend in... Uh, well, he lives in the big city. He had, he would bring us acorns from his acorn tree. No, oh, Mr. Mr. Little Bill, he just loved them. He just loved them. He ate well. He ate fruit. He ate fruit. He ate vegetables. He every kind of seed I could, you know, get from the grocer. Uh, nuts, especially at Christmas time when you'd get the mixed mixed Christmas nuts oh my goodness those big Brazilian nuts those were the one thing I mean he could crack a walnut in a heartbeat it would be gone but to see him ra uh, wrestle with a Brazilian nut was quite quite humorous because those things are a bit tough to get into but they are my favorite at Christmas time 
so all right my friends I'm just gonna dump this excess out take a little bit of I don't have any baby wipes wipes left but I'll take a little paper towel and some alcohol clean up these moles and then I will meet you in the other room with some resin okay we'll see in a little bit you know, I had to bring you back for a minute. I turned this inside out like Miss Frances would have done the lid. And I thought, well, maybe if I take these acrylic markers, I can go ahead and paint the outline of these little dots. So now this set is something I got from Timu. It's uh, 36 colors water-based, quick-drying, sun-fast, strong covering. Um, oh, I've got all kinds of colors. Looky there. So I pulled out this brown, and it's got two tips. It's got the larger tip there for bigger areas, and they have the smaller tip here. So I'm going to real quick see if I can do this. And... Uh, then I'll go get some resin mixed up. Just thought I'd go brown and it's not going to be that dark. But if I can just get it around the edges, I'll be happy. Like I said, we can redo it if I have to once the resin has set. I didn't want to go black. I'm just going to do a fine line around the edge. Shouldn't take too long to dry. Got fuzz on it already. I'll get that off. You know, I never liked fall colors. Never liked orange. I do like brown. Wasn't a yellow, yellow fan either, but uh, I uh, never really cared for the fall colors. And I know the reason for that. Um, my son passed away in the fall. And ever since then, just don't care for the fall. I think maybe this is a bit of a therapeutic way for me to get past that. You know? He's been gone 21 years coming up. And I'll tell you, I'm grateful I'm where I am today. So my heart goes out to any of you mothers out there who have had to endure that part of your journey. God bless you. I think I'm going to like this. It looks like the um, the mold has a wider band of, you know, the outline. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just do a little fine line. We might see it. We might not. It's one thing about being creative, you know. There's always little surprises. Always little surprises. And to know that you've done something that you've made yourself is just really rewarding. No matter what it ends up like. It's, it's, it's my therapy. Always has been, even when I was a child. But, uh, it's pretty amazing what people can, 
I never used acrylic markers before until I saw someone else on a video, I can't remember who, use them. And they weren't these brand I, brand, I think they were a better, you know, better quality brand. But I thought I'd try it. I do like painting and coloring. Almost. One more little orange one here. Then I have to be careful when I turn it back right side out that I don't smudge or make a mess with these micas. Get them all over again. Okay, there we are. Now I'm ready to go. Oops. Make some resin. Just put the wrong lid on the wrong side. Okay, be right back. Okay, everyone. I mixed up 10 ounces of my Let's Resin resin and I put it in my debubbling machine by Resiners for five minutes and then just took the heat gun and went over the top and it looks pretty clear to me. But now I'll probably make more bubbles because what I want to do is dip some of these dried petals into the clear resin when oh, I see a hair of course and put them in the mold that is the lid and where is that I can see it I can see it right about there piece of lint there you go not a hair lint so I'm just going to start with the clear and we're going to work our way into the colors and I could pour a little bit into another container but I'm just not going to. I'm just going to start off by taking a petal if the you know if there's a big stem on it I'm just going to break that off and I want to go ahead and dip these in the resin to avoid bubbles and we're just going to lay it into the mold with the pointed pointed edges of the petals towards the outside of the brim and I'm hoping this will make it look a little thatched don't want a bunch of clear in there I'm just gonna go around and whoop <laughs> And build that up a little bit. I want you up to the side. There we go. From the middle up to the side. Let me see. I thought about drying more flowers this year, but I just have so many I need to, um, you know, work with that I already have. And I couldn't think of much else to do with these tiger lily petals. We're just going to layer them in. Come on. And I don't want to mess up my micas. That's the pointy side. And give it a little something extra. I'm sorry I just hit your, I just hit my camera. Ooh, that's a big one. Just give it a little extra something rather than, you know, just plain resin. It's relaxing. Get into a zone. Whoops, you're not going to work with me, are you? Get into a zone. Oh no! <laughs> that was not the zone. Oh mercy, that was not the zone I intended to get into. Oh for goodness sakes, Billy. Holy crow. That's something. Uh, lots getting slippery. That's my excuse.
give it a little squidgy squidge. Move them all around. Gosh, you know, I really don't see bubbles. It's a good sign. I just see the mess I've made on uh, the outside of the mold. That's all I can see. All right. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just get a little... That's too small. And a little cup. A little dip cup here. I'm just going to drown these in it. These pieces right here. We're just going to throw them in here. Get rid of them. Me too. Heck, ah, that's nothing to that really. Just get those bits in there. Okay. Yay, I have another container. I'm going to pour some resin in here. Should have done this the first place, but I didn't. I thought I could really plan these out. Should have known better. It's not like laying brick or something. Gee. All right, I'm just going to do it. Just, and Oh, these, you know what, you must be careful when you use the tweezers on your flowers. I learned, one of my first projects, I learned that um, you know, I wasn't even thinking, but just popped holes all through, all through my, um, all through my flower petals. It was a shame. Here we go. If I bothered with, um, glitter, we might not even see it. Break a couple, doesn't matter. Look at that. If they poke out, I can sand them off, but we don't have much left. I'm just going to do it. Stick you under. I like it. I'm not complaining at all. I like it very much. Very much so. Alright, I still need to get under the lip. That's where our bubbles will, will form if they really do. And then, sometimes, Especially if it's a corner, not so much a round underneath edge. Gosh, you can really um, get a lot of vacant, you know, holes there. Oh, I like it. They're, they're down pretty good. They're down pretty good, and I used them all. Yay. A little more resin. Should we pour a little glitter in? Why not? You wait my gloves again. It might. It, it, there's a lot it would have to go through, I'm saying. But I guess it wouldn't hurt. Would it? Even if it just goes down the edges, it would be pretty. Now, if I can cut some of this without getting it everywhere. And just sprinkle some in. Where's my little scissors? Here we go. Just cut a corner off of there. And we'll just do a little shaky shake. Could try to stir it, but then I'll make more bubbles. I don't want to. Open that a little bit. I can go sparingly because I know they're not going to travel far. Okay. Here we go. Get in there. Under that rim. That's where they hide. 
for that rim right there. Actually, it's looking pretty good, my friends. Is that on the outside? Yes. Okay, a little more. We're going to set this aside and call it beautiful. Call it beautiful, right? To the top. Yes, sir. There's a bubble. I'll keep an eye on that. I will. Let's just move it over. I'm going to keep it on this tray. Oops. Like I said, if they pop up too much, I can sand them off. I think we're in good... Ooh, I think we're in good shape. All right, Billy. Get to going. Get a move on. All right. Now, I know we need brown, but we cannot just add the brown to the orange after we make the orange. That's what, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to get my orange. Is this a broken bag? Of course it is. Um, God, are we glad to use this up? I won't have to mess with this bag anymore. Okay, okay, come on. Oh, you're gonna be a bugger on me. You know what? I'm just going to cut this tarn top off and I'll deal with this glitter or this powder another time. I'm just going to cut a corner off. I'm tired of dealing with it. Alright, here we go. Orange. Orange. Make a. There we are. Pretty, pretty. I don't want it that bright. I might not want it that bright. I might have to tone it down. Where's my stick? Stir stick. All right. That is pretty. That is really pretty. I might want to tone it down. How do you do that? Well, I'm thinking I've got some brown paste right here. Get rid of those lumps. Those lumps of mica. Make sure it's in there good. I'll blend it up. I just love the way the color, you know, trails and swirls into itself. It's so luscious. Gosh. So pretty. Where are these chunks? And it's translucent, for sure. Thinking. I bet if I added just a dot just a dot you can see our petals are more brownish now that I look at them um, now this is a color pigment from Timu this is that set I think of 32 or 36 inks I got off of there I have to pop it I've got resin on my fingers. So I'm just going to put a drop in and see if I can tone that down. Don't ruin it, Billy. <sighs> I like that. 
still have our shimmer. I think one more is going to do it. I need more of a burnt orange. One more. Come on. Do it. Do it. Okay. There we go. There we go. That's better. I don't want to move that other mold over here to look, but ooh, look at that. That is so rich looking. See all the bubbles? <laughs> There's a lot there now. It's getting thicker, but I'm going to do one more. One more. Hmm. Don't get greedy, Billy, but just do one more. Okay, here we go. I'll be happy. Yes. That'll be nice. Tone it down just a tad. Not so bright. I'm going to pour some mold release in this mold. Now that I, it's embedded in my mind now, you have mold release. Delete. Use it. And I got this off Amazon. Well, it's cast and craft. Captain Craft. Captain Caston. Alright. Now, oh no. That on my fingers. Let me wipe this off. Brown. I don't need that there. Alcohol. If I put that fine glitter in here, it would just go right straight to. Look at the hair now. Was it would just go straight down to the top edge. I don't think we need to do that. Just little specks. All right, all right, we're doing it. I don't know if heat will do anything to that. Let's pour. Get the lid on this. Okay. It's going to be pretty. I'm going to leave it to the side because I still want to do the squirrels. Oh, I like that color. Just go slowly and don't bubble up on me. I hear people say, pour high. Pour slow, pour high. I don't know. Let's see what happens. As long as I have a little bit left for the squirrels. And this was 10 ounces. Oh, looky there. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, there. It's not full all the way. Let me sneak under here. Oops. Wrong angle, Billy. Isn't that better? I like that better. Okay. As Steve McDonald would say, it's squidgy widgy. God, it's just fascinating how resin works with color. There's a bubble. Okay. I'll definitely keep a watch on that, and I should go right to the top because I don't know actually how thin this bottom is going to be but I think there we're good and I see a couple of bubbles they'll surface now <laughs> yes good shape all right aside from wasting it as I drip it back to we'll use this dark brown eh we're going to make this brown now one, two, three. For as much as we have, that might work out fine. I might need more. Might not. Makes it good. It's getting thick. Ooh, wouldn't that be a pretty bloom? <gasps> Oh, let me know in the comments if I should try to make some autumn blooms. I haven't done a bloom for a long time. 
and I've been watching Julie well I I've started out watching Julie when I first started playing with resin um, and she's doing those uh, fairy flowers those are lovely too but I like the blooms and then there's another technique the Liramar technique a lot of resin artists are doing um, God, that's pretty isn't it? it almost looks copper but that doesn't um, I don't know why that style doesn't appeal to me if it appeals to you I, I'd be you know you really have to twist my arm but I'd be willing to try that but um, I, I I don't know it just doesn't trip my trigger geo geo geodes don't trip me you know they don't do much for me either I mean the real ones are beautiful to look at but I'm not a geoid a fanatic well no matter what that'll be pretty squirrel acorn and nut Ugh. okay oh save your deli containers these work great and it fits in my, my debubbler so um yeah it fit perfectly and i was able to use it today all right little squirrels here we are all ready to go look at them you know that almost has a maroon tint to it doesn't it here we go might not get everything but we'll see i have to get into that little hole too i'll have to get my little micro stick and make sure we get resin in there Oop. over pour This one's about had it, but that hole was right. Oh, I don't want to mess up my micas, do I? I can feel it. I hope it gets in there. Oh, perfect pour. That hole is right down there. Okay. Just enough. Just enough. Do the acorn, and you know when these are ooh, a little too much. Before these are set completely, and I'm going to have to watch. Um, I'm going to demold them and try to curve them a little bit. So if I wrap them at you know at the bottom of the. mold the mushroom body then I can um, shape them on a jar or something and just uh, I overdid it let's, let's push some of this over here what was I saying then I can glue them on and there won't be too much you know gaps or things like that it's gonna be. I think I used my last puppet because I'm not into them. Wonder if I can get some of this off of here. Oop. Well, darn. I'll just do what Julie does. Just get a paper napkin or toe and. Slop some of that up and out. A little bit anyway. Oh, I still have some brown. What can I do with that? That helped, didn't it? Mm hmm. Soak some of that up. Oh, these are going to be so cute. Oh, I see bubbles in the lid. I'll have to tackle those. All right, everyone. I do have a mold here. An extra mold. Let me show you. I, they were for earrings for Halloween. Uh, I have three separate molds. 
one, they look more like pendants, and they're they're this, they're facing the same direction. So you know, you when you do a earrings, you want them to be the same, but in you know, having different directions to them. I think you know what I mean. It's a bubble. But I think I can move that over. I'm gonna pop that bubble in the squirrel. Um, now these are earrings. These are earrings because you know they're opposite of each other. Now two of these. What could we put the brown in? We could put the brown in the coffin. Then I got this big one that is more like pendants, and they're the same. You know they're not opposite opposite of each other, and they're pretty darn big. So I might use that, I don't know. All right, we're just gonna fill these coffins. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let it sit up and I'm gonna watch for bubbles. And I shall see you ooh, when we're ready to demold, okay? Have a great rest of your day, everybody. I sure appreciate you. Love you lots, bye. Hi everyone, I'm back. These have been setting up about eight hours and I thought, oh my goodness, I better check my little squirrels to make sure they're pliable so I can shape them with somewhat of a curve and be, you know, before I go to bed. Anyway, they're ready to do that. And the molds are set up hard now so I can demold. We won't put them together tonight, but I'm just going to get them unmolded and at a point to where I can make sure the curvature of our little squirrels works out. Uh, these are the little earrings I poured with the excess resin. I'm just going to move those aside because they're definitely not ready yet. And uh, I did demold. Look how cute. Look how cute is that. They are darling. It shows the little fur and everything on there. I think I smushed the air, acorn a little bit, but uh, not the acorn, the, um, oh Jesus, pardon me. Well, there's the acorn, and here's the little log. So they turned out really, really good. Uh, once they're set, I'm going to take some rough and buff and uh, highlight a little bit, probably with the gold. And I have some of that right here. This is a gold one, rough and buff, rough and buff. There we go. So quickly, before I go to bed, I want to get these situated so I can put them together tomorrow. So we're going to demold. A few of the uh, petals have stuck up a little bit. I'll clip them and I'll sand that down and probably put a layer of resin on top. But let's see. Oh, I didn't grab my alcohol. Yeah, I was just sitting here in my craft room, fiddling around, um, watching YouTube, and I thought, oh, I better get myself to bed, but I better check these first. And I'm glad I did. Oh, I don't have alcohol in here. I'll see what I can do, if I can get them out. But you know what? Instead of struggling, I'm going to go grab it. You know, I should just have another one of these in this room, another spray bottle with alcohol, because I tend to rely on it in here sometimes. Um, I use it quite a bit to wake up, wipe off my work area. So let's just get a little alcohol in here. I thought about, you know, trying to curve the uh, little accent pieces around the the mold, but while they st were still in here, but I know that wouldn't be accurate, so I'm just going to demold this now. Alcohol's in. I do like the color. It matches the petals really well, I think. Okay, Billy, don't... I hope the, ant, the top part isn't going to... Ooh, here we go. It's still a little pliable, I think. But I gotta get her down. Oh my goodness, these are tough, these little jars. Okay. Now if I can just get one. There we go. One side. Yep. It's 
going to bend like the pumpkin did a little bit, but we should be all right. Come on, you. Really, no bubbles. That looks great. Well, I better put my glasses on before I say that. <laughs> all right. Oh. oh, I did it again. See, this is still soft. Put a little wrinkle in the top of the jar, darn me. Well, if it's too bad, I can sand it down. Little ripples there. We'll just we'll just call that character. But what I want to do, see, I'll have to sand it. Should not be a problem. Still soft right up here because that's the thinner section. Anyway, I am going to just get a curve on these. I think I smashed his little face. Like so. As long as I get a curve, I can set them down and I don't think they're going to distort very badly. Get them down close to the bottom. God, they're cute. Of course, I'll paint the eyes on. We'll do that tomorrow. And then when it sits, oh, love it. Okay. He's curved. Um, the acorn, I'm not sure how to curve that. We'll just try it that way. Okay, that should work. The little log, that's really cute. Probably have it towards the bottom, so we'll curve that a little bit. I love that mold. Actually, it's a um, mold for uh, baking. That's what that is. Look at this acorn, how cute is that? Wouldn't that make cute earrings? Oh, okay, there. They've got a curve, so we should be able to attach them, no problem, and I will set that aside. Now, this is a deep mold, and uh, gosh, 10 ounces was just, just a good guess, wasn't it? Let's see how these turned out. I've got bubbles on the top, which are going to be sanded anyway, and I see the glitter a little bit. may have more bubbles than we anticipated but you know add a little character I suppose and I'm glad I went clear you know what I didn't fill that up all the way to the top because I don't have much of a lid lip for the jar Whoa. bit of one bit of one but should make no mind come on you Oh, look at that. I like that. Oh, oh, that is sweet. That is sweet. Look at that. Our mica showed up. Subtle, but really, really nice. I can barely see the brown line that we did, the outline, with the acrylic marker, but oh, yeah. Ah! Here, let's put this on here. Is it going to fit? Oh, it's going to fit nicely. Okay, we'll get a better look at it tomorrow. But for the time being, what do you think? The colors are brilliant. There it is, the autumn mushroom. I like. There's a little glitter. A little glitter focus camera. Not too much, but just enough. So it did come down a little bit. Oh, there's a little more there. Oh, excellent. All right, everyone. Huh. I'm glad I was able to do this tonight or else I would have been buggered up by tomorrow. All right. I shall see you all in the morning. Sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Hi, everyone. I'm back with our mushroom jar, and um, 
I went out today, I sanded the bottom edge here so that is nice and smooth, there's no sharp edges. I did sand a little bit on the top here because I have a bubble and it uh, felt a little rough on the finger so I like to make sure there's no sharp edges but I do love that color and I do love the lid but when I was outside I've got fingerprints all over it now when I was outside I sanded the bottom where all those flowers were sticking up uh, I've got a ton of bubbles here Oh my goodness, look at that. They were all under the lip. And I thought I was watching it pretty good, but apparently not. Anyway, we can fix it. Um, what I need to do is do another coat on the inside. And I'm going to do a, another coat on the outside, just in these areas. And I will, um, you know, tape it off. I didn't... I didn't trim down this bit of the rim. It's fairly rough. And remember, I, I said I should have filled it up more. Um, well, I didn't. So I need to fix this. There is a gap down here. And uh, the resin, if I just did a top coat, would just, you know, power right over it. So let me get my little... Here's the original lid mold. No, that's not it, is it? Where are you? Oh, here you are. And uh, I'm just going to be, you know, I'll get this level and set it on top. But what I really need to do first is tape, tape around this edge so I can make it a little thicker and cover this up. That's sanding powder you see there. And if I took a paper towel... And, uh, pardon me, I didn't have a paper towel. If I took a paper towel and put, you know, a little, um, isopropyl alcohol on here, you know, I can wipe some of that up, but resin will absorb it. And, you know, I could have just sanded this off, the rough edge here, but there's, there's an open space with this flower petal and if that's not sealed in it'll it'll rot it'll just sit there and rot so we're taking precautionary measures and we're going to fix this up because not everything turns out perfect the first pour i discovered that so here i just have some painter's tape i'm going to take let's see enough to go around the edges and very carefully if i can I am going to go around here and make make a ring if I can bring it as far down to the edge that I can and I'll probably make this oh a good at least a good quarter inch deep all right so you know this paper is not going to seal it completely but it's a start and I could have trimmed it down but we'll just leave it alone I can do that maybe in a bit but I just want to get right down to the edge tape that in place well maybe let's just cut a little bit of this off don't need that much there I'm just going to cut this in half. I should have done that in the first place, but we'll be able to see better. Or I'll be able to see better. And I'll save that for something else, that tape. Always using tape. So, there we go. I'm just going to finish with my fingernail, just push that in the best I can. Like this and I found because I couldn't find any locally so I got on Amazon and I found a silicone putty it says it's well it's right here and I'm gonna put that in my Amazon shop uh, fusing moldable silicone putty waterproof removable reusable uh, 
dielectric strength, excellent straight, works in extreme temperatures. So what this is, as a rule, like that, and pardon the wrinkling noise, I'm going to, if I can open this, just take a little piece of it, and it'll be like we're playing with clay again. Look at that. Let's see, how much do you think I need? To start with that. I've never used silicone putty. Um, I tried silicone caulking before, but uh, I think this is going to really, really help with resin. So, this is fairly clean. I'm just going to get that together and I want to make a long a long little worm if I can roll it out it's, seems like it's pretty pretty tough stuff but uh, it's gonna fit the bill I'm sure of it might take a minute to roll this out You know, and I thought I could have used um, oh, rubber latex, but because of all these bubbles in here, I really wasn't sure if I could get all that rubber latex out of there. So we're going to try this new product from new to me product anyway, and uh, see how it works. It's nice that it says you can reuse it. I don't know. You know, I'm sure the resin will peel right off of it. Let's hope so. And uh, if that's the case, I found something that's going to work for us. I mean, it's getting a little dirty, but that doesn't matter, does it? All right, Bill. Ignore the arthritis. <laughs> hands are, you know, my hands feel good. My hands feel good. Once in a while they seize up on me and I get a finger that kind of gets all cockeyed, but other than that, I, I'm pretty good there. Just saying. Can I get that around? Not quite. I keep rolling. Stretch it out. Okay, look, looks like we have enough. So, crossing our fingers here, I am going to just seal up this edge. And um, when I make up resin, I think I'll just wait till I have another project and uh, then pour this because I'll have to do it twice. Once this is set, I'll have to do the edge. And I'll probably do the same thing, just find an area, tape it off, um, and use this silicone putty. It's sticking to the resin nicely. I don't think we'll have any leaks. And that's the main objection, right? Okay, there. I'm ready to fill that up. So that'll be a step down the line, and of course I'll make sure that's level. So while that's setting aside, let me uh, let's get back to the little critters here. Oh, they're so cute. Uh, what I did in my other pumpkin is I remembered I had some rub and buff, and this is antique gold, and I think I'm just going to... You know, they, our colors, they mixed, but, you know, they're still not very distinct. So, I'm going to take a little rub and buff. I wonder if I should use my fingers or a Q-tip. Actually, I could use, oh, I don't have any in here. I'll just do the fingers. That's pretty gold. It doesn't take much. 
it really doesn't. You might want to dab a little off before you start. So I'm just going to dab a little off of there. And uh, let's see. If the sun was shining, let's just highlight the little bit of the tip of the tail. Now, I don't know. You see that? A little difference, right? Just a little difference. But we want to bring out the detail. Oh gosh, look at my fingernails. Pardon me, I've been out and getting dirty again. Let's get the little tips of his fur on his tail. A bit of his ears. A bit of the forehead. Should have just squeeze some of this out on something. Here we go. Let's get a little right here on this tape. That should do us there. Not a big difference. Just a little something. Forehead, ears. I'll uh, get a little more on this forehead. Once this dries, and I, it's not going to take that long. Once this dries, I'm going to go ahead and take some of my... Um, I'll just use acrylic paint. And I'm going to do the eyes. The black pupil. And whoops, oh, and a little bit of white. So, can you see the difference of the two? Let me see, focus camera. My light's not good in here today, but I'm just gonna highlight little highlights. Do his eyes. We'll call that good. I'll do him in a second, but let's look at this. Look, oh, got the. You can do the same little bit of the log. I think I want to have it up this way and I think I'm going to use my um, E6000 to glue these pieces onto the resin because the, both pieces are so dark I wouldn't be able to get my UV lamp to cure that let's get a little bit of gold on there Ooh, that turned out cool there we go I'm not sure if I'll use the, the uh, pine cone. I kind of squished it. Oh, we could always use it for some kind of fill. But that that works out pretty nice, this rub and buff. It's in my um, Amazon store in the links below. Most everything I use or have ever used is in my Amazon store. And oh, we really don't need much there, do we? Isn't that acorn cute? I think I'm going to do a couple of those. I be easier if I had two molds or there was two of these in that one mold to make a pair of earrings but there just a little highlight that's what we're gonna do I'll wait till that dries get everything else done on my little squirrels and uh call it good See, that rough and buff will, I sh it is rough and buff, I'm hoping I wasn't saying it wrong. That could last quite a long time. Uh, really nice for antiquing. Oh, he turned out really good, didn't he? He's eating a, he's eating a nut. I might have to paint that. All right, we're going to let those dry. Pardon my fingers, now I've got it everywhere. Let's see if the alcohol will take that off. Fair enough, good enough. For now. All right, that's that, that's that. Set those aside to dry and I'm gonna put this in the box. Well, I don't want to rattle it. Remember, I had these earrings here to use the rest of the resin up. So I just had enough for the boo. And I'll probably get gold on them. I thought about top coating with uh, UV resin, but you know, that really...
sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's really cute, hey? Boo. That's a cute pair of earrings. I'll have to put a top coat on the back here because that's rough or sand it down. But that's really cute. Oh, there's a hole, a little bubble hole. Maybe if I put a charm on there or something, it'll hide it. Here's the little coffins. Now, that's the back. And I fill that right up. I could just sand a little bit on the edges. There's the top. And the other one, I love the color. Okay, so then I'm thinking, well, what am I going to put on those? They just can't be plain. Although I might have charms with, uh, oh my goodness, what do I want to say? It's skulls, but I might not have two of each. So I went rustling. I went rustling through my stickers and I came across my Let's Resin Insects and Spider collection and these are really cool. Some of them are holographic and I was looking for small moths but I don't have two. Well, I do have two the same but we'd never see them on the on the coffin with that dark color but there are oh, others. There's bees, wasps, um, moths, and spiders, which are great, but the spiders won't show up either. And these are holographic. There wasn't two of the same, or that would have been really nice to use. There's, there's the bumblebees, so cute. I've used some of those before. Anyway, I found some beetles. So, and I'm gonna have to top coat this too. Actually, I could, well, it doesn't matter which side I use, does it? I could top coat either one. I will just leave the back, the back, and the top, the top. Okay, and that'll cover those holes. So I did find two beetles that will fit on here that are the same, which would be these two. Oh, I don't need to cut this. I can peel them off, duh. All right, Billy. I get the tip of my exacto blade here, which has something on it. Get a little alcohol on that. Boy, I never knew alcohol could save the day, really, until I started resining. Make sure your blade is in the knife. Okay. Tighten that up. All right, we're going to go with these. Oh, I don't know if we'll lose the legs, but I will root it through everything, and I do not have anything else that would possibly work, mainly because of the color. So, if I can maybe just grab that. Okay. I don't want to tear his legs off. Let's see how that's. Oh, we might lose the legs, but you know what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to stick him on there anyway. Just fits. Barely. Just fits. Okay. So, very carefully, I'm just going to eyeball this beetle. I don't know what kind of beetle this is really don't care to know because if I came across one of these in my garden, I'd probably panic. Oh, and last night, I have to say, I sit outside before I go to bed and I admire my little tree. Well, I, a couple of nights ago, I kept hearing something in my tree and it wasn't a frog and it wasn't a cricket. It was a chomping, 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 chomping sound. So... I was able to see into the tree one of those Katie dids eating on my tree. Oh, and those things are the. If there's any bu other bug I can't deal with, it's a Katie did and grasshoppers. Ugh. Um, anyway, big old Katie did. You know they're about they're about that long. And they've got big green leaves that look like 
or wings that look like leaves. That's how they, you know, hide them, camouflage themselves. But oh, they're creepy looking things. Anyway, discovered them chewing on my tree. Tried to get it with the fly swatter, but um, I was short about four inches. I was going to wallop him. Sorry to say. Let me get my little brayer. So we'll top coat that just to keep that sticker on there. And uh, just make a simple pair of earrings. Come on. That'll work. That will work. Okay, everyone. I will get back to you. Um, once I pour both sides of the back. Or I'll let you know when I'm ready to do the second part of the back of the lid. Meanwhile, you all take good care of yourselves. Have a beautiful day. And I will talk to you real soon. All right. Thanks for watching. Sure appreciate you all. Hello, I'm Mac. I just uh, wanted to show you how I finished off the little jewelry pieces we did with the little caskets and the booze. Our little squirrel is all ready to go. And let me just show you the underside of that lid. And I'm jiggling because I'm holding this bone. That's uh, the shine that the polyurethane gives you. And you'd never know that it was sanded. Okay, now back to these. The little coffins, I went ahead and I had the findings to just put them on, put them on these little black necklaces. So that was simple enough. The little booze, I didn't like them really. They were bland and uh, they had little bubbles in them. So I, I can't pick it up and <laughs> look through the camera. Okay, I took some little charms that I had and some little rhinestones and I just uh, put polyurethane on the top set these down and now I have some little findings or uh, pendants for necklaces they're in gold and I don't have any gold chain but uh, this is what I did whoops come here I'll just show you that's a little moon and I added the little owl just dangling from the moon. And I thought those were a little unique and different than what I would normally have done had I just put a finding on them and called them good. Anyway, I'll take some stills. And uh, this is project is done. Oh, and the lid fits really good too. Look. Oh, are they sweet? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.